Yes, sir. Hey. All right. All right, sir. Excellent. Hey, Sean. Sean, I'm Hurt. And I'm Harry. My partner, Harry Lyons, is a noted Hello Advertiser cartoonist and Bob the Buck. And my partner, Bob Herkes, is uh, the editor, publisher, and chief scribbler for the Bellfish Bull, and also a world renowned saloon keeper. And the whole mess is brought to you by Royal Hawaiian Air Service, those magnificent men and their flying machines. That's right, Bob, and you know that's why we've hired at uh, great expense this 101 piece Royal Hawaiian band to play those magnificent men and their flying machines. To remind you that Johnny Peacock and his crew down at Royal Hawaiian Air Service are indeed that magnificent men in their flying machines. You know, they've got new up-to-date equipment with Cessna 310s that are just beauties. They've got experienced pilots and very knowledgeable guys about the islands, so you can take a very scenic trip around any of the islands and uh, have a very flexible schedule. I know when we came over, we stopped over at Point Barrow, Alaska and down in Honduras and stopped off in Tokyo before we got over here to uh, Kona. So it was really a wonderful trip and enjoyed the whole day. Now, Harry, this program is heard occasionally on radio station KONA. That's when we get the tapes to a long time. And as I understand, uh, yesterday's show ran backwards. That's uh, right. Although I think maybe they just didn't realize that's the way we usually are. Well, we do work that way. And so we will be on every night, we hope, from now on at 6.30 right through Saturday, giving you on occasion some important facts about the Billfish Tournament. Uh, we usually aren't too authoritative because uh, by the time we get in or by the time we uh, record, the fish aren't in it, and that makes it a little difficult. Well, we fake it a lot, but uh, as long as uh, people are listening, uh, it's all to, all to the good. I forgot to mention, though, Bob, that uh, uh, those magnificent men and their flying machines, of course, the Royal Hawaiian Air Service, you can get in touch with them by phoning 259-775, and that's the way to get a hold of them. Great. Well, I suppose we ought to talk a little bit about fishing today, uh, Harry, this being the first day of the tournament. Uh, things were pretty slow, and frankly, we don't have too much to report on. Uh, there was one fish weighed in when, when I left the pier, and that was team number 10, the city of Berkeley. The angler is Pastorino. The fish weighed 100 pounds, 115 pounds, on 50-pound test line. That would give him, with his bonus points, 230 points. Uh, they were bringing the fish in, uh, team number 16, Hawaii Big Game Fishing Club team number 1. The angler was Priest. The estimated weight was 500 pounds on 130-pound test line. If his estimate is close, of course, that would give him 500 points. And if it uh, turns out to be the biggest fish of the day, he will get an additional 100 points. Now, there are, my, it's my understanding, there's still two teams uh, fighting fish out there. It seemed, the action seemed to happen uh, late in the afternoon. So we, at this point, don't really know who's leading the tournament. But that's, uh, Harry, par for the course for the... The Herx and Harry show. Right now, how many are out uh, right now, Bob, as, as we go to... Uh, Still two hooked up, is my understanding, Harry. Hooked up. Well, the fish must like the rain, I guess. Is that, is that what it is when they come down this late? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> haven't figured that out. No, You're well, not much about fishing. Uh, we, if we can find out, we'll, we'll let you know later in the week. Okay, Bob. Now, I think, uh, as any of our listeners from last year uh, remember, we do have uh, a hero of the day on this program, the Herx and Harry hero of the day. And uh, the way we explain that is to try to give a little recognition to the guy or the wahine angler who fouls up the most during uh, one day of fishing. Uh, we've had some very funny ones and some sad ones, and uh, most of them are pretty unbelievable. And today's, uh, we had to stretch a little bit because well, maybe, fishing maybe was talk a little bit about some of uh, last year's. You know, we had some good ones oh, last yeah. year. Oh, yeah. Who were some of the ones? Oh, we had, we let off uh, with Freddie Rice, who the first day, um, I got similar to the day, lost his rod and reel overboard. Mm-hmm. Second day, he lost his boat. That's right. Uh, he found it later in the day. That's right. Uh, so he was uh, he was a hero two days running. The third day, he caught a fish. It was his day off, so the fish didn't count. Right. And it, it looked like he was in pretty good shape to take the uh, the award for the week. We also had Clint Ashford. Clint was pretty spectacular. He caught a big fish on his day off, which, of course, didn't qualify. Right. Then he came in and decided not to weigh it. Then his wife was looking through the record book and said, Oh, Clint, baby, you better weigh this. Looks pretty close. He weighed it. It was world record. Uh, but disqualified because his leader was too long. That's right. But of course, the uh, the real hero of the of the week of the year, maybe the century or the decade, is our friend uh, Freddie Splash oh, Hartley, Splash, that's right. who uh, who was held by the Pacific Blue Mar Marlin as the world's largest angler ever ever landed on rod and reel by a fish. That's right. Freddie went overboard with his uh, rod and reel, uh, maintained control of the pole, got back on board, fought the fish up the gaff, and lost it. In our opinion, that was one of the finest feats ever done by by anybody in the in the fishing business. 
And as a result, Freddie was last year's hero of the day, the week, and the year. Right. Well, I think we better get back to our uh, hero of the day this time, and so we'll present our first Berks and Harry hero of the day. And today that honor goes to John W. Taylor, an Australian who is fishing for the Swordfish and Tunny Club of Australia. Now, he uh, apparently hooked up to a big one at about 9 o'clock this morning and fought this fish very well and very expertly until the harness broke at 9.15. And uh, it's my understanding, Bob, that he lost the rod and the reel and the harness and everything else. Uh, fortunately, this year, the angler did not go along with the fish. Is that, is that That's right? right. And as usual, the first victory went to the fish. That's right. And this usually happens. Now, he's not necessarily representative of our uh, heroes of the day, but uh, we don't know too many details actually concerning uh, this particular uh, event because we don't know the condition of the equipment or the, uh, the how hard the fish was pulling or anything else. But we thought we would salute our friends from down under. So here's the Herx and Harry, first hero of the day for John W. Taylor of Australia. For John W. Taylor. All right. Okay, now what's next on the list here, Harry? Well, I think we have a very interesting guest for the folks this time. Of course, being on the third day of the uh, fishing show, we, uh, we're going to introduce Jim Conway from the Outdoor Sportsman, and uh, we'll probably spend most of our time talking about uh, about hunting. Although, I did take Jim out uh, catching ton of crabs in Kauai, logically. That's the way we do things. And uh, we got a few and uh, ate them all up and really had a good time. Jim, why don't you tell us something about... Uh, your experiences in the state since you've been here and some of the filming you've done. And uh, Bob, first I want to ask your friend how he got all the way to Japan in a 310. <laughs> well, it's a pretty spectacular airline. You don't know that. That's, 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 that's a great airline. airline. I thought he'd get out there at about a thousand miles and go splash. You know. Well, it's, oh, down, no. it's downhill from Point Barrow. That's right. Was... <laughs> and he had his pockets full of gas. That's right. Uh, I said, hey, <laughs> oh, Bob, we've had a most enjoyable uh, time. Uh, as I say, we were over at uh, your hotel over in Kauai and... Uh, we got some bone fishing film done and had a very fine crab feed with you. Uh, since we've been here, uh, I guess we won some pig tournament that they had here the other day by uh, letting the air out of a couple of Mr. Parker's pigs. And, uh, uh, well, yesterday we were up goat hunting and or sheep hunting, and today uh, we've been out uh, in the tournament. I got one nice big ahi. He was just the right size for bait. Oh, I see. Well, he went back into the sacrificial yeah. goat. Huh? And I think, what is it? You have your, your hero of the day. Right. Yeah. I think you got another one coming. We saw a guy out there that had one on for three hours, and after three hours, his rod broke, and he couldn't fight it any longer. They're bringing it in for him back in. So, uh, we both, they are hand lining that one. Yeah, they're hand lining and big one in. We, yeah, we, we may have to uh, put the, uh, the hero of the day into suspension. Right. So we can learn, 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 all, learn all the details. Right. One of the uh, incidents, did you read Hal Wood's column about the. Uh, the, uh, the the boar hunt and the advertiser when they referred to the fact that uh, one fellow got two cows with one shot and it was supposed to be sows and they figured maybe the other two was sows we weren't sure <laughs> no they had it all taken care of these panniolas they painted C O W on the cows oh, and B O A R on the boar <laughs> so anybody that could read could have got one well tell us about your day out there today, Jim it uh, it seemed to be well, the weather was against you this afternoon but how were the seas and and the conditions of the ocean uh, from your experience. Uh, the conditions were very good, and I don't think I've ever been out of Kona when they weren't. Uh, uh, we were down off the, uh, on past the airport, down off the point down there, down on the banks down there. I don't know whether they hooked any fish up there or not. Uh, there was quite a few fish uh, in there last week, and I think they took several big ones in there the last few days. So we spent most of the day down there, and of course, uh, when we went down there with a camera, why the fish uh, All were off uh, Kailua. Maybe the camera shot. Which Jim, is part for the course. Jim, I, I think I heard over the radio, we were unsure, of course, that... Uh, you were trying to hustle over uh, in your boat to get near uh, one with somebody that was fighting a fish. Did you manage to get there in time to get pictures? Well, that, that was a fellow that had the one on for three hours, and uh, oh, uh, the rod finally broke. And of course, uh, we could have taken pictures, but to take pictures of a billfish tournament and have to handline it in. Uh, That's right. Uh, wouldn't be too good. Uh, uh, Peter talked a little bit last night. Uh, we're here making films. Uh, uh, will be in the area quite a while and of course uh, the films will go back to the mainland and it would be a big advent or uh, a very advantageous to us to uh, try to get on a boat with a fish so if somebody has one if they'd let us on the boat so that we could take pictures of it uh, it would be an advantage to us an advantage to the conan who are taking care of us uh, the airlines and everybody concerned and uh, i think we could also promise the angler who was fighting the fish that would see that he got the color sound film of his uh, Hawaiian Billfish Tournament. Jim, do you have any, any help we can get would be appreciated. Any plans to uh, stay uh, in, in, in Kona or other parts of the islands to film anything else afterwards, or are you just about to pow after this tournament, no matter what happens? 
Uh, we've been uh, with Bob the uh, last week, and we've been here for quite a number of days doing some films now. We have films from Kalar, and we have uh, two other films done. Uh, we go home on Sunday, and I believe it's Tuesday or Wednesday we leave for Rivers Inn in the British Columbia to do some salmon fishing. So our summers are very busy. I'd like to uh, ask you about the bone fishing over in Kauai. You, you said you got some, and I haven't had a chance to talk to you about it. Uh, Bob, we got lots of bone fish. I think we ended up with 16 or 17, but unfortunately we got into school of small ones. They ran about a pound and a half to two pounds. But uh, with uh, some of the work around and the bass fishing and uh, uh, the crabbing, which we did and had a wonderful time, uh, the bone fishing, uh, we'll be able to put together a half hour film showing quite a bit of the uh, scenic beauty of Cal and the fishing and uh, other facilities that you have there. Jim, who are, uh, who are you fishing with today? Uh, Pat and I comprise, my wife Pat and I comprise a team of, of Portland, Oregon, and uh, Larry Barrett, who does all the photography of the outdoor sports with us. And uh, there were just the three of us on the boat, and we had a 63 footer. We had to draw foot. a map how to get to the back, you know. <laughs> that, wasn't the size of, that wasn't the size of the fish. No, no. no. <laughs> I got lost three times trying to get to the stern, but uh, we had a very good time. <laughs> who are you? The Adventure. Uh, That's right. The adventure uh, one of the boat artists of Ohio. Oh, no. Who are you fishing with tomorrow? Uh, we're on the Atlantic tomorrow, which is a local boat. Uh, we fished on it three years ago when uh, Charlie Spinney had. That's right. You'll be out with uh, Bart Miller tomorrow. Then Bart's been uh, doing pretty well. Huh? Fine. We'll we'll have him tie one up for us tonight and get one in the morning. <laughs> well, I uh, I wish some of these guys had tied them to a log that they caught uh, Saturday. But it's funny. Uh, there wasn't a single marlin taken on Sunday. There was some taken Saturday and on Sunday. I think there was some tuna Sunday. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was um, slow today, except for that one big strike this morning at. Uh, at nine o'clock, and then this afternoon, I guess they started uh, hitting. But it's very similar to what it, to what it was last year, uh, Harry, as I recall. That's right. We started uh, very slowly. I think that I'm just guessing, trying to remember. I think there were about four taken the first day, and then it went very hot on Tuesday and Wednesday. I think were the big days last year. And of course, there were a total of uh, well, I, I, the biggest single day I think is 15 in the tournament. And that happened either two, in the history of the tournament. I think that happened either Tuesday or Wednesday last year. They had some very good days in the week. After we left uh, you on, I believe it was Tuesday, uh, Bob, uh, I think one boat went out Wednesday. I don't know who it was. Came in with a 600-pounder, turned around and went out Thursday and came in with another 600-pounder. Well, we sure uh, Prior to the time of the tournament. And then uh, we got lucky the other day. We were out uh, doing some filming, and the, one of the fellows got a sailfish, which I guess is quite rare around here, and we got some very nice pictures of the sailfish, well, which it would incorporate in the film. I understand it was a, uh, about a 90-pounder. Yeah, Mel got, uh, gee, I can't recall his last time. Mel, 62? Yes, I think there was a, come out with about a 62 or 65 pound sailfish, and I believe the Conan's kind of mounted. That's right, we're going to mount it. It had the biggest sail. I've seen a lot of sailfish in Acapulco, Mexico, but this one had the biggest sail that I think I've ever seen on a fish. It's it like it seven feet mount. long. That's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. a real high sail. Oh, gosh. Too bad we didn't get it in the, uh, during the tournament. It would have been very interesting to do so. Mm -hmm. We could have cut it down and called it a marlin. Right. <laughs> it qualifies though. It's got the, it's got the right shape of nose. It has yeah. a bill for yeah, it's got, it's got the right shape of nose. That's well, right. I'm going to go sail fishing tomorrow. Okay, well, good luck. Well, Jim, it's uh, certainly been a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, we'll be seeing more of you during the week. And I hope the tournament goes well for you and your wife, and that you get a lot of film with Larry, because uh, The Outdoor Sportsman is one of my favorite uh, uh, shows, and I, I watch it faithfully. You show good taste. Oh, of course. <laughs> But it's been a pleasure. I hope I don't make your hard luck column, and I hope I miss your <laughs> Herx and Harry hard luck bit, but I, I hope mean, I the, make the, the, hero, the, hero, the hero of the day with right. a thousand well, pounds. Uh, Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you very and much. It's uh, time for um, Herx and Harry to, uh, what is this, uh, like maybe knock it around or something. I guess that's about it. Actually, I think Harry, he's still going to get down and find out who's hitting this thing so we can uh, publish that fantastic newspaper, the Dofish Bowl, which is extremely authoritative. That's right. And uh, let's hear it again for old uh, Johnny Peacock and Royal Hawaiian Air Service. That's right. Yes, sir. Yeah, until uh, tomorrow, this time, I hope we're on tonight. This is uh, the Herx and Harry Show, and I'm Herx. And I'm Harry. And uh, where we go.